Veep, Jesse Owens, and Chris Como are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is August 9th, 2022. It is the 221st day of the year. We got 144 days left. And in most cases, kids will be going back to school in under a month. Today is the 32nd Tuesday in the 33rd week and the 50th day of summer. You got 44 days left until fall. Preseason football's going, baseball's going. It's a good time to be a sports fan right now. Today is National Veep Day. National Veep Day on August 9th recognizes the succession plan of the President of the United States. The day also acknowledges the one president who was neither elected vice president nor president, Gerald Ford. Yeah, not a lot of people realize that he wasn't elected with Richard Nixon. Ford was nominated to take Spiro Agnew's position on October 12th, the first time the vice president vacancy provision of the 25th Amendment had been implemented. The United States Senate voted 92 to 3 to confirm Ford on November 27th. On December 6, 1973, the House confirmed Ford by a vote of 387 to 35. After the confirmation vote of the House, Ford took the oath of office as vice president. Spiro Agnew got in a lot of trouble. He was Nixon's vice president for tax evasion and money laundering. He had taken a bribe from the governor of Maryland. Ford had been in the House of Representatives since 1949, and he had told his wife that this was his last hurrah, you know, in Congress, and then he was going to retire, and then all this happened. <laughs> then, of course, Nixon resigns. He becomes the president. He is like the accidental president. But the 25th Amendment states, in the case of the removal of president from office or the death, resignation, or inability to discharge the powers and duties of said office, the same shall devolve on the vice president and the Congress may by law provide for the case of removal, death, resignation, or inability both of the president and vice president declaring what officer shall then act as president and such officer shall act accordingly until the disability be removed or a president shall be elected. That's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo, but in the end, if the president or vice president can't perform his duties, whether he had to go to surgery or he has a stroke or dies or gets removed from office, they got to get a replacement. And it's not just random dude. There's actually a chain of command that has to be followed. In the early days, some of the early presidents thought that they should be able to pass down the presidency to somebody else, like a, one of their kids or something like that, kind of like a monarchy. And then that's part of the reason this is in place. In the history of the United States, 14 vice presidents became the president. The people elected only five of them at some point after completing their terms as vice president. The other eight ascended to the presidency due to the death of the president. And then there was one vice president who became the president who never was elected at all. And that was Gerald Ford. It's very interesting, the 25th Amendment. In recent years, it's been called up like it should be used. Thing is, it's not easy to to enact. There's a lot of steps that have to be taken and a lot of people have to be involved. In the past couple presidencies, they keep talking about it. Right now, they're talking about it with Joe Biden because of his age and all that. And then when Trump was in after January 6th, they talked about doing it. And I think in coming years and different administrations, we're going to keep hearing it because that's the new call to arms for politics. Sort of reminds me of how California tried to recall their governor. And everyone's all, oh, he's getting recalled. That's horrible for a governor. Well, California does it almost every single time they get a new governor. Honestly, there's been like 40 recall attempts in California's history. Only about three or four actually have gone all the way to the election process. Strange. All right, let's see what else happened on August 9th. 1814, the Indian Wars. The Creeks signed the Treaty of Fort Jackson, giving up huge parts of Alabama and Georgia. 1862, the American Civil War. Battle of Cedar Mountain. At Cedar Mountain, Virginia, Confederate General Stonewall Jackson narrowly defeats Union forces under General John Pope. 1936, Summer Olympics. Jesse Owens wins his fourth gold medal at the Games. This was one of the most historic Olympics we ever had. First of all, besides Jesse Owens winning four gold medals, you also had Mark Robinson, who was the brother of Jackie Robinson, the guy that broke the color barrier for the Major League Baseball. He won the silver medal right behind Jesse Owens. This Olympics also had Louis Zamprini. He was a local boy from where I grew up, Torrance, California, but he went on to become a war hero. There's a really interesting movie about him called Unbroken. It's not as good as the book, but it's a pretty interesting movie. This is also the Olympics where when Jesse Owens kept winning, Adolf Hitler, who was the main guy in Germany at the time, this is before the war, 
he uh, walked out because this was supposed to be the Olympics that was going to show how dominant the Aryan race was. It didn't pan out like he wanted it to. 1945, World War II, Nagasaki is devastated when an atomic bomb called Fat Man is dropped by the United States B-29 aircraft called Boxcar. 35,000 people were killed outright, including 23 to 28,000 Japanese war workers, 2,000 Korean forced workers, and 150 Japanese soldiers. 1969, the Tate LaBianca murders. Followers of Charles Manson murder pregnant actress Sharon Tate, wife of Roman Polanski at the time, coffee heiress Abigail Folger, and three others. 2014, Michael Brown, an 18-year-old African-American male in Ferguson, Missouri, is shot and killed by a Ferguson police officer after reportedly assaulting the officer and attempting to steal the weapon, sparking protests and unrest in the city. Movie is released on August 9th, 1996, Jack. This was a really cute movie with Robin Williams, Jennifer Lopez, Diane Lane, and Fran Drescher. Michael McKean was also in there. He was uh, Lenny from Lenny and Squeaky. This is a story of a boy whose body ages at a much quicker rate than his peers. At 10 years of age, the boy resembles a fully grown 40-year-old man, played by Robin Williams. Though his body ages quickly, his mind remains that of a young boy, leading to social and personal hardships. The film was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. It actually did pretty good. Even though it wasn't like a blockbuster science fiction movie or anything like that in the summer, it uh, was number one at the box office the first week, and it took home $60 million during its first theatrical run. Born on August 9, 1970, Chris Como, American journalist known for being the news anchor of Good Morning America from 2006 to 2009 and hosting the morning show for CNN beginning in 2013. He won several awards, including the Polk and Peabody Awards. He attended Yale University for undergrad and received his JD from Fordham University. He started out on the Fox News Channel before becoming the anchor for 2020. Among his numerous awards for journalism is the American Bar Association Silver Gavel Award for investigating juvenile justice and the Edward R. Murrow Award for breaking news coverage. He joined CNN in 2013, eventually launching Como Prime. He is brother to ex-New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, and that's how he had to leave CNN. He was reporting on it at the same time he was trying to help his brother, because he's a lawyer, with his legal defense, which is kind of a conflict of interest, so he just resigned from CNN. Don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I'm sure it was right before they were going to fire him type thing. It's too bad. I really liked him. I liked him when he was on Fox News, CNN. I think he's just a good journalist. Died on August 9th, 2008, we lost Bernie Mac. He gained popularity as a comedian and won the 2002 Television Critics Association Award for individual achievement in a comedy for The Bernie Mac Show. He was a great actor. I loved him in Bad Santa. He's good in so many other things, but that's the one thing I always remember him from. He was also in this movie with Eddie Murphy called uh, Life, where they go to prison back in the 1930s. Uh, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence, and he's, he's in there. It's pretty good. Bernie Mac suffered from sarcoidosis, which frequently attacks the lungs. It like inflames things and you get pneumonia all the time. Bernie Mac went into cardiac arrest and subsequently died during the early morning hours of August 9th complications from pneumonia at the age of 50. I always get a little sad when comedians die. You know, Robin Williams, Bernie Mac, Bob Saget. I mean, people that are there to make you laugh are not supposed to die at an early age, in my opinion. All right, that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.